join with Vidya. Hare Krishna. Oh, that thing on the... Have we got it on here? Interpreter, yes. Language yes. interpretation, yes, yes. If you click on that. Why was it not there last night? I'm not sure. English? Yes, no, it's... We are all upset now. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Ghoravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. Uh, just to review a little what we've been covering, the first verse was dealing with the urges, the six urges which have to be controlled. And when these six urges are not controlled, then they lead into the six, uh, th six items which cause a deterioration in our devotional service, mentioned in text number two, how we can uh, go down in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Then text number three described positive aspects of devotional service, qualities which we should be cultivating and which we should be uh, developing in our Krishna consciousness. When text number four was describing about association, loving exchanges with devotees, and we spoke about different things, about giving prasadam and uh, revealing our mind and uh, offering gifts and accepting gifts. And then we spoke, text 5 was describing how to distinguish between different devotees so that we can make these exchanges more meaningful. Proper devotees should be selected to reveal our minds and to inquire and to give service to. So we it was described about recognizing someone just began to chant the holy name and how we respect them in the mind and someone else is chanting constantly they're on the second level intermediate level am i muted okay and so on second level we someone's worshiping the deity is initiated we can offer we offer obeisances to him and we associate with and serve a devotee who doesn't criticize others. So we spoke about qualities of Uttama Adhikari, we spoke about qualities of the Madhyama Adhikari, seeing the different levels. Madhyama Adhikari, he will see the Supreme Lord and offer worship to the Lord. He will associate friendly with devotees keep friendly relationships with the devotees. 
He will give mercy and show compassion to the ignorant who are willing to hear about Krishna consciousness and he will neglect and avoid people who are atheistic or who are blasphemous and who have no interest in Krishna consciousness. We said Uttama Adhikari is always thinking how to spread Krishna consciousness how to expand the Krishna Consciousness Movement. He constantly chants the holy name and he doesn't criticize others, right? He sees everyone as being engaged in Krishna's service in different ways. Then we went on, text number six, we heard about how the Ganges water may appear to be full of bubbles, foam and mud. So sometimes people may look at the external features of a devotee but as devotees we should not become uh, we should not give attention to the external features we should consider the internal features internal aspects that someone's making an effort to cultivate krishna consciousness is sincerely hearing about krishna and chanting the holy name following the regulative principles like that we don't discriminate someone on the basis of his body being of a low birth, diseased or deformed or handicapped in any way externally. So that's text number six and then text number seven we were speaking about the chanting of the holy name and developing a taste for the holy name and the example was given how a person with the the disease of jaundice cannot taste the full sweetness of sugar candy. In the same way, a neophyte, someone may be chanting, he doesn't have a taste for the holy name because he has jaundice of avidya. He has a, jaund he has a jaundice like condition, he's very attached to material life, to material sense gratification. His heart is very polluted. So they can also become purified by chanting the holy name of the Lord. That was text number seven, right? We will ask you, what are, what are the three stages in chanting the holy name? Someone can give us the answer. We will ask, uh, we will ask Purna, Purna Krishna. Maharaji. Haribo, Maharaj, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, Haribo. Uh, the three, the three stages of chanting the holy name. Yeah, you should know without and looking the at the book. Is huh? Uh, I'm not. I'm not looking at the book, Guru Maharaj. Okay, then look at me. Look in the camera. Let me see. <laughs> uh, yes, Nama Parad. The camera is a little bit uh, up. Nama Parad is uh, when we chant with uh, uh, with offense. Yes, and then second one. And Nama Bas, uh, we chant without offense? No, we chant with lessening, lessening offenses, reducing uh, the offenses. Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay, yes, Maharaj. Uh, and the third one is uh, Sudanam. Meaning? Uh, chanting, with, uh, chanting with the uh, taste of uh, love. Chanting the pure name. Shudanam means a pure name, right? Yes, yes, Lord. So there's offensive chanting, there's lessening of offenses, and there's pure chanting. So three stages in chanting of the holy name. And yes. We spoke about the problem, why people don't have a taste for chanting the holy name. What is the problem? Because uh, chanting with uh, many desires. 
okay. not for uh, serving yes. of the holy name. Right, yes. So, in other words, they have many anarthas, anarthas, unwanted things in the heart. Like you say, that some material desires are there and also offences to the holy name. And in, imperfect, improper knowledge, not proper knowledge of Krishna consciousness, and different things. Weakness of the heart also is mentioned as one of the anattas. Weakness of the heart means we don't take Krishna consciousness very seriously. And the, big, the main cause in offensive chanting, one of the main problems with offensive chanting is inattention. And we spoke about different kinds of inattention. One, one was apathy, meaning they couldn't care, they don't worry, they don't think it's very important. And then another, another problem is uh, laziness. People just don't want to do it, they don't, they don't want, they're lazy. And then uh, distraction. We let other things occupy our mind, take away our mind. So this is the cause of uh, inattentive chanting. And inattentive chanting means we don't get the real love for Krishna. We want to get love for Krishna, right? That's the important thing. All right. So, looking at the questions here, we want to see uh, at what stage can Maya not disturb a devotee? Advaita Chandra Prabhu, at what stage will Maya not disturb a devotee? Uh, at Baba stage, Maharaj. At the stage of Baba, right. Very good. Yes, if, if we get up to the Baba stage, then we're pretty safe. Although sometimes, even at the stage of Baba, devotee may have problems. Like in Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj was up to the stage of Baba, but still he got problems. But generally speaking, if we're at the stage of Baba, we won't have problems. So that's, that's how it's described like that. Right? And what is the meaning of this word? Dur Ashraya. We will ask Giridhari Prabhu. Do you know what the word Dur Ashraya means? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So as I remember, Dur Ashraya means is the other name of this material word. The, the place where is uh, not actually a place of shelter or a place where there is so many misery. Right. Yes. Right. It's describing the material world. That the, the, the material world is not giving us any real shelter. So, we don't want to try to find permanent home here in this material world. We're concerned to go back home, back to Godhead. Right? So, uh, Everyone knows the meaning of this phrase, Jivarswara Pahai Nitya Krishna Das. We will ask Prima, Prima Dan Pramu, Nitya Sira Krishna Prem. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Jivarswara Pahai Krishna Renita Das means that uh, the uh, real constitutional, constitutional position of the Jiva is the uh, eternal servant of. Uh, Lord Sri Krishna. Yes, right. We're all eternal servants of Krishna. But we come, in the, we come in the material world and we're thinking we're the master. We're thinking we're the controller. So, yes. All right. So you seem to be okay. You seem to be quite familiar with these things. So we're going to go on to text number eight. I'm going to switch over to screen sharing. Uh, I'm sorry, I think the battery is low. My battery is low? Oh my goodness, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I got my connection, so. Thank you for noticing. Get my charge.
Might have just not sure he's charging though. Oh, it's, it's a plug, huh? It is plug, it is on, but it's not showing charging, or it is showing. It is not showing charging, that is what I'm thinking. Maybe that socket is. Why not? I can switch the socket. Push it in this one. Does it make a difference? Both of them should charge, right? They should both charge. It's actually it could bend down from 10 to 9 percent. Yeah. Why it's not charged? I don't know. There it is. No, it's charging. What happened? I don't know. I just unplugged it. You turned it around? Yeah, yeah no. I guess I turned it around, but it shouldn't make a difference. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I, I, I want to work with the, ver the verse tonight. We'll look at the text. Okay, text number six. Text seven. Text 7 was talking about the, the jaundice of material life. And we go on to text number 8 and hear about the holy name. Tannamarupa charitadi sukirtananu smrityo kramena rasana manasi niyojya tishtan braje tadanuragi jananu gami Kalam nayad akilam iti upadesha saram. Upadesha saram, this last term at the end of the verse number eight, often quoted, the essence of all advice, right? Upadesha saram. We're studying Upadesha Amrita. Rupa Goswami is talking here about Upadesha saram. And he says here, the essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Braja, Goloka, Vrindavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. So that's the translation for the verse. Uh, the essence of all advice. And you can see Rupa Goswami is talking about a higher stage of devotion. He's talking about, he's telling us, you, that, you know, we have to 24 hours a day chant and remember Krishna. And so this is a, an advanced level of devotional service. And he talks also, one should reside in Braja, Goloka Vrindavan Dham. Now Goloka means the spiritual world, right? Of course, that's the goal. We want to go and we want to go to the spiritual world. And so, Rupa Goswami is telling us, is preparing us, 
He's telling us what is the qualification to enter into the spiritual world. So he, Prabhupada's purport begins, he's talking about the mind. And he says, the mind may be one's enemy, one's friend. One has to train the mind to become his friend. Krishna consciousness movement is especially meant for training the mind. To be always engaged in Krishna's business. The mind contains hundreds and thousands of impressions, not only of this life, but also of many, many lives of the past. These impressions sometimes come in contact with one another and produce contradictory pictures. In this way, the mind's functions can become dangerous for a conditioned soul. Students of psychology are aware of the mind's various psychological changes. In Bhagavad Gita it is said, Yam yam vapis marambhavam chajiti anti kalevaram tam tam ivaiti kuntiya sadata bhava bhavita. Whatever state of being one remembers, when he quits his body, he, that state he will attain without fail. And so Prabhupada is telling us about the mind, how it's very important for us. Remember in the very beginning, in the preface, when we were studying the preface of this book, Prabhupada just said, the first business in all spiritual activities. Does someone remember? You can remember what was the first business in all activities? Any hands up? Yes? Oh, a lot of hands, eh? Okay. We'll ask uh, Ananda Radhika Maharaji. Control the uh, mind and senses mind. Yes, thank you. To control the mind and senses. That's the first business. So Prabhupada talks, we have to make friends with the mind, train the mind to be always engaged in Krishna's business. How can we do that? Simply by being in our Krishna consciousness movement and taking part in the activities of Krishna consciousness. Our mind will naturally train and it will learn to think of Krishna. You just have to stay in the association of the devotees, be around the temple and take part in the temple program, take part in the Sankirtan, and book distribution and serving the deities and all these different things. And this way naturally we'll always be thinking of Krishna. So it becomes very natural and easy for a devotee in Krishna consciousness. Right? Going ahead. At the time of death, the mind and intelligence of a living entity create the subtle form of a certain type of body for the next life. The mind, if the mind suddenly thinks of something not very congenial, one has to take a corresponding birth in the next life. All right, we have the example. I just spoke about Bharat Maharaj, how he had to take birth as a deer because he thought of a deer at the time of death. On the other hand, if one can think of Krishna at the time of death, he can be transferred to the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. This process of transmigration is very subtle. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami advises devotees to train their minds in order that they will be unable to remember anything other than Krishna. <laughs> you know, there was one devotee, uh, his parents didn't like him becoming a devotee. He was a young boy, a quite young man, a youth at the time, about 17 or 18. So his parents were quite well to do and they didn't like their son becoming a devotee. So they had the boy kidnapped and the, the kidnappers, they gave him some drug to make him lose all of his memory. <laughs> and he, for, he lost all of his mind. He couldn't remember anything. All he could remember was Krishna and Hare Krishna mantra. He couldn't remember anything else except Krishna. <laughs> so Prabhupada is saying like that here also. He said, we, uh, 
Rupa Goswami advises devotees to train their minds in order that they will be unable to remember anything other than Krishna. So that boy, he did that. He, he couldn't remember anything. He forgot his parents, he forgot his home, his name, every, all he could remember was Krishna. So that's the goal. Similarly, the tongue should be trained to speak only of Krishna and to taste only Krishna Prasadam. So we had that in the beginning. Rupa Goswami further advises, Tishtan Braje, one should live in Vrindavan or any part of Brajabhumi. Brajabhumi or the land of Vrindavan is supposed to be 84 kroshas in area. One krosha equals two square miles. When one makes Vrindavan his residence, he should take shelter of an advanced devotee there. In this way, one should always think of Krishna and his pastimes. This is further elucidated by Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So we can see here, Prabhupada is also encouraging the devotees that if you feel inclined that way, you can also go and live in Vrindavan and serve Krishna there. And certainly there's a lot of advanced devotees. It is said, you do devotional service in Vrindavan, you get a thousand times the benefit of doing service any other place. But it's also said, if you commit offence in Vrindavan, you get one thousand times the reaction. So it's very dangerous. You have to be very qualified to go and live in Vrindavan. It's not for neophytes. Uh, so we, we, we don't do anything without having guidance from the senior devotees, without having the sanction of our spiritual master and the blessings of the senior Vaishnavas. We wouldn't want to do anything like that. We have to be very qualified to go and live in Vrindavan. So this is further, further elucidated by Rupa Goswami. Krishnam smaran janmachasya Preshtam nija samihitam tat tat kataratas chasyo kuryad vasam braje sada. A devotee should always reside in the transcendental realm of Braja and always engage in Krishnam smaran janmachasya preshtam, the remembrance of Sri Krishna and his beloved associates. By following in the footsteps of such associates and by entering under their eternal guidance, one can acquire an intense desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, so Rupa Goswami has given this, this kind of instruction that we should always reside in Braja. And Prabhupada told, taught us like that. He said, I'm always in Vrindavan because I'm always remembering Krishna. And similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling Advaita Acharya, I want to go to Vrindavan. But Advaita Acharya told him, wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, of course. So wherever he is, that is Vrindavan. Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So a devotee wants to always reside in Vrindavan, at least within the mind, if not physically. And remember Krishna and his associates. Then following in the footsteps, under the guidance, under their guidance, then we develop a desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So developing this desire, Rupa Goswami states, and we get another verse, in the transcendental realm of Braja, one should serve the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna with a feeling similar, similar to that of his associates. One should place himself under the direct guidance of a particular associate of Krishna and follow in his footsteps. This method is applicable both in the stage of sadhana, spiritual practices executed while in the stage of bondage, and in the stage of sadhya, God-realization, 
when one is a Siddha Purush or a spiritually perfect soul. So Srila Prabhupada is quoting these verses by Rupa Goswami describing how one can execute this kind of uh, advanced devotional service, what we would call Raga Bhakti, right? We should serve the Supreme Lord Krishna with a feeling similar to his associates. That means following in the footsteps of his associates, devotees, associates like Nanda Maharaj and Uddhava, the cowherd boys or the gopis. And one should place himself under the guidance of a, an associate of Krishna and follow in his footsteps. One should be attracted by a particular associate of Krishna. Like somebody is attracted to Mother Yashoda, someone else is attracted to Nanda Maharaj, or someone's attracted to follow the, the cowherd boys like Sridham or Subal or Sudama or the gopis. So many gopis. We have uh, Lalita, Vishaka, Indulekha, Rangadevi, Sudevi. Uh, all gopis you can be attracted and take up the mood of one of these particular associates and follow in their footsteps. So then Rupa Goswami mentions the two stages, sadhana, which we are doing, we are all sadhakas, practicing, but this, we're still in the stage of bondage, we're not yet perfect, we're still in the stage of bondage under the control of maybe some bondage to the modes of nature, but at the, there's also the stage of sadhya. So in both stages, one would practice in a similar way. We see the example of Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, how they were practicing, how they were doing sadhana. Externally, they were doing sadhana, but internally, they're perfect. They're sadhyas. In, in their, internally, they're in their spiritual bodies and they're serving Krishna in their spiritual bodies. But externally, they're doing sadhana and they're serving Krishna in their phys with their physical body. So both ways, like Rupa Goswami, we said he is Rupa Manjari, so he's serving Krishna internally as Rupa Manjari, and externally he's a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he's serving Krishna doing his sadhana chanting and doing parikrama and uh, worshipping the deity, Rupa Goswami's deity, Radha Govinda, like that, and then writing books also. So this is very an, an advanced level of devotional service which is being described here. Rupa Goswami's began at the beginning, you know, we say, you want to follow this, you don't just immediately go to Vrindavan. First you practice from the beginning. Text 1, control the urges. If we have not controlled the urges, then we have no right to go off to Vrindavan and try to do this kind of advanced devotion, taking shelter of the Holy Name and just talking about Krishna. We're not qualified. So, because people try prematurely for these things, they often get problems, they get disasters. One has to be very careful. So Prabhupada then goes on quoting Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Someone would like to read? Can we have somebody to read please? Who's going to read? Priya Govinda Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. So Shri please. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur has commented as follows upon this verse 
One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remembering Krishna and his name, form, quality, pastimes, and so forth. In this way, after developing a taste for such things, one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time constantly remembering Krishna's name, fame, pastimes and qualities under the direction and protections of an expert devotee. This is the sum and substance of all instruction regarding the cultivation of devotional service. Thank you. In the new fights. No, wait, wait, thank you. Yeah. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati is describing here. In the beginning, neophyte, not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness, right? But somehow he practices and if he is able to train his mind and if he's able to develop a taste for such things, then he can think about trying to live in Vrindavan. But he has to develop, he has to first of all practice and develop a taste for the holy name and for remembering Krishna's pastimes, form, qualities. Then, and then, then you can think about going to Vrindavan. And, but when you go to Vrindavan, under the guidance and protection, direction of an expert devotee, we don't go independently. Hmm? And we have to have developed the taste. Remember the different stages of devotion? Prabhu, who was reading? What was his name? No, no. Who just read this now? Anyway, what, what were the diff Do you know the different eight stages of devotion or nine stages of devotion? which we have to go through to cultivate bhava and prema? Priya Govinda. No, Maharaj. No? Priya Govinda Prabhu? Devotional service, the path of devotion begins with? All right, okay, we will ask Ananta Vijay Das. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavat Pranam. So, the state is uh, from uh, Sraddha Tata Sadhu Sangha Anartha Nivriti eh, Bhajana Kriya Anartha Nivriti uh, Anartha Nivriti uh, and uh, Nista Nista and uh, Rati, uh, Ruchi, 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 uh, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, and Prema. Yes, right. Very good. Yes. So, can you give the English meanings? Yes, uh, uh, Srada, we, we have to be, uh, prepare our faith when we uh, come for Sadhu Sangha. Then in that Sarisanga, we, we do bhajana kriya, bhajan, with the association for the uh, devotee and farm devotee. And from that association, we will get, uh, uh, we will come to the stage of anartha nivriti, then uh, abandoning all the material desires. Then after anartha nivriti, we come to the state of uh, nista, which is uh, we are free already from the material desires. And from nista, we come up to the state of ruchi, when we get the taste from the chanting of uh, holy name, Hare Krishna. Then from that uh, state, ruchi, we come to the asakti, when we have attachment for for the holy name, attachment where we want to chant always uh, the holy name of Krishna. And from that state, we come up to the state of uh, bhava. 
and and Bahwa is a, after Bahwa and Prema, the last one. All right. And at what stage does one get initiation? Uh, he will get the initiation from the stage of uh, uh, Nista Amhara. No, no, no. No. No, no. Anish um, initiation, Diksha. What stage do you get Diksha? Diksha from the, from the Shraddha. No. No. Shraddha is the beginning, right? Shraddha brings us to the association of devotees. Then we associate with devotees and we learn how to do devotional service, bhajana kriya. So bhajana kriya, when we're doing the bhajana kriya, that's when we get the diksha. Uh, right? We get initiation yes, at the stage of bhajana kriya. Mm -hmm. And then with bhajana, we're doing bhajana kriya and we will get rid of the anarthas, as you said, anartha nevriti, destroying the unwanted things in the heart, yes. the offences and the, uh, the fault-finding tendency to find fault and the material attachments and desire, get rid of all these things and then we come to the stage of nishta, right? So if yes. what, one wants to go into this, this kind of devotion which is being described here, which is actually raga bhakti or spontaneous devotion, one should be at, the, at least at the stage of nishta. He must be very steady in his Krishna con. He must have completed anartha nevriti. And that's the most difficult stage. That's the biggest part of our devotional service, to get through anartha nevriti. It's not an easy thing. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of intense practice, and very strong sadhana to come through anartha nevriti and come to the stage of nishta, to be steady. Right? All right, we need someone else to read. Who can read? Okay, Ram, Ram Sharma, is it? Ramesh. Ramesh Sharma can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. In the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Katha. This is called Shravana Darsan, the means <coughs> of hearing. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, qualities and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called Vranadasa. Varanadasa. <coughs> when one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Katha. When one is able to stand in ecstasy, he attains the stage of Purana Vastha. The, the stage of remembering, recollection, absorption, meditation, constant remembrance and strength are the five items of progressive Krishna Smarana. At first, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, but later, remembrance proceeds uninterrupted. When remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. When meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. By uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters the stage of samadhi or spiritual trance. After smarana, dasa or samadhi has fully developed, the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position. At that time, he can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. This is called sampati dasa, the perfection of life. Thank you, Prabhu. 
All right, so Srila Prabhupada is describing the progressive stages of Krishna consciousness. First of all, neophyte stage, we engage in hearing Krishna Kata. Right? We want to hear regularly, every day, just like in our Krishna conscious program, every morning, every evening, Krishna Kata. Actually, when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, we would have four or five classes every day. We would study, we, we hardly had any books in those days. We had the Krishna book, volume one only, and we had the Ishopanishad, we had Nectar of Devotion, and we had Prabhupada's own Bhagavatams printed in India. And we had the abridged Bhagavad Gita. And so we would read these books every day, we would have classes, and we would discuss. We didn't know very much at all, but we were happy to be hearing about Krishna. So this is the stage of hearing. So Prabhupada says, by constantly hearing the holy name of Krishna and hearing his transcendental form, qualities and pastimes, then one attains to the stage of acceptance called Varanadasha. And when one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Kata. We want to develop that kind of attachment. We, just like we said, we, we've got to become attached to Krishna. So being attached to hearing Krishna Kata is non-different from being attached to Krishna. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of Smarana Vasta, the stage of remembering, chanting in ecstasy. So we, we need to have kirtan, dancing, chanting. And then Prabhupada goes on to describe different stages of progressive uh, Krishna Smarana. Krishna Smarana, remembering Krishna. It's very similar to the stages which are described in Astanga Yoga. In the Astanga Yoga, they also have different stages of meditation ending in Samadhi, right? You have uh, after Pranayama, then Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi. Hmm, like that, Pratyahara is detachment and then Dharana, uh, absorption, dhyana, the meditation, and samadhi, trance. And so Prabhupada is describing here five items of Krishna smarana. At first, remembrance of Krishna will be interrupted at intervals. Difficult to fix the mind. The mind wanders, so there will be intervals where the mind wanders away. But later, remembrance becomes uninterrupted. We have to practice. Just like when we're chanting, we have to practice remembering Krishna. When the mind wanders, bring it back. We have to constantly bring the mind back. And when remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. And when meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. And by uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters samadhi, spiritual trance. So, this is very advanced meditation. After, the, so that's smaranadas or samadhi has fully developed. The soul comes to understand his original constitutional position. We understand our spiritual identity. He can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. And this is called Sampati Das, the perfection of life. So very, very advanced stages. The Goswamis of Vrindavan, they could meditate like this. They knew their spiritual identity and they could meditate on Krishna's pastimes. All right, we'll go ahead. Someone else can read.
Kirti Mataji would like to read, please. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Chaitanya Charita Marit advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulative devotional service of the Lord according to the difference uh, according to the directions of scripture. In this way, a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities, and so forth. When one has developed such, such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna, even without following the regulative principles. This stage is called Raga Bhakti. Or devotional service in spontaneous love. At that stage, the devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna in Vrindavan. This is called Ra Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotional service can be executed in the Santaras when one aspires to be like Krishna's cows or the stick or flute in the hand of Krishna or the flowers around the Krishna's neck. In the Dasyaras, one follows in the footsteps of servants like Chitraka, Patraka or Ratraka. Raptaka. In the friendly Sakya Rasa, one can become a friend like Baldeva, Sridham or Sudama. In the Vatsalya Ras, characterized by parental affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. And in the Madhurya Ras, characterized by conjugal love, one can become like Srimati Radharani or her lady friends such as Lalita and her serving maids, manjaris like Rupa and Rati. This is the essence of all instructions in the matter of devotional service. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj All right. So, Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita, those who are neophytes, give up all kinds of desires and simply engage in regulative devotional service according to directions of scriptures. Right? This is called Vaidhi Bhakti. You follow the rules and regulations of the scriptures. In, in, the nectar, in the nectar of devotion, it is described how devotional service is on three different levels. Devotional service in practice, devotional service in ecstasy, and devotional service in love of God. So devotional service in practice is divided into two sections. One is called Vaidhi Bhakti and the other is called Raga Bhakti. So in the beginning, we follow the rules and regulations. We have to know the rules and regulations. We have to follow them. Uh, just like it's mentioned, uh, Prabhupada mentioned two phases in devotional service, right? It was mentioned, uh, there was a question even. What are the two aspects of Tat Tat Karma Pravartanat? Who was the lady who read? What was her name? Kirti, Kirti Madhuji. Yes. Do you know what are the two aspects of Tat Tat Karma Pravartanat? Yeah, there are two aspects, Yam and Yama. Yes. What is Yama? Yama means uh, who are uh, rejecting the rejecting the principles of the uh, spiritual uh, scripture scriptures and niyama means re uh, regulating and following the rules and regulations of uh, scriptures. So what? For the advancement of Krishna consciousness. What is the, the yama? What do we have to do? What do we have to reject? Which, uh, which are not favorable for the advancement of Krishna consciousness. Like, uh, if we are associating with uh, a material people, Jana Sangha, so we have to uh, 
sacrifice or sorry not sacrifice but we have to do tyaga of that uh, sangha sangha tyag i i don't think you've got it quite right i think the yama Prabhupada mentions are the prohibitions. Prohibitions mean no meat, fish and eggs, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. That is the yama. Okay. Right, right? The four prohibitions. Things we, that is the yama. We don't do these things. Right? We want to practice tat tat karma pravartana, that means the regulated principles of devotional service. You're right about the niyam. The niyam is what? Chanting, worshipping the deity, uh, offering food to Krishna, taking prasadam, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting the holy name. That's good, that's niyam. But the yama, the things we give up, no. Meat, fish and eggs, no intoxication, like that. Yeah, for regulative principles. Yes, right. right. If if we do the if we do the you know the if we do all the chanting and everything but we don't follow the four principles then won't be good. We won't get the good result. Okay. So uh, in the beginning we follow the rules and regulations. This way a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, its form, qualities. Right? Within the holy name, the holy name of Krishna also includes Krishna's form, qualities, his fame, pastimes, everything is in the name. Within the name there is Rup and Guna and Leela. So when we develop such attachment, when we become really attached to the holy name of Krishna, in other words, we've really purified the heart, we've got through an artanavriti, we've come to the stage of nishta, then we can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna, even without following the regulative principles. Now, don't misunderstand this. Don't think that means that, oh, we can do what we want, we can have you know, we could take drugs, we could have illicit sex, we can gamble, we can eat anything. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But it means one is so devoted to Krishna that one may not follow strictly all the things like, you know, like uh, bowing down before the deities and like uh, going to the Mongol Arti. He, he, he may not uh, engage in all the all the different items of bhakti but he doesn't deliberately break the regulative principles regulative principles they're, they're not talking about our four regulative principles but they're talking about the regulative principles of bhakti which means worshiping the deity and offering foodstuffs and studying the scriptures those kind of principles. So he, he's doing, he's, he's engaged in serving Krishna in different ways. So this stage is called Raga Bhakti or devotional service in spontaneous love. So this is, this is a, an advanced stage. At this stage the devotee follows in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna in Vrindavan. This is called Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotional service can be executed in Shantaras. Shantaras means a stage of neutrality, right? There are five rasas. So Shantaras is a stage of neutrality. And, and, and we're given, Prabhupada gives us some examples how we can serve Krishna in Shantaras. You can be a cow, one of Krishna's cows. You may say, oh, I don't want to be a cow, no. <laughs> uh, you may want to be a stick in Krishna's hands or a flute. Just think, if you're a flute in Krishna's hands, you can taste the nectar of Krishna's lips all the time. Krishna blowing the flute. You can be tasting the nectar from Krishna's lips 
So some people really, you know, they really, that, that idea of being a flute in the hands of Krishna, Krishna is so attached to his flute. And sometimes the gopis, they will even steal the flute, the flute from Krishna because Krishna is so attached to that flute. Sometimes the gopis will take it and hide it. And Krishna will become anxious. What have you done? Where's my flute? Or may want to be a flower around Krishna's neck. The flowers in the spiritual world are all eternal. They don't wilt, they don't wither and dry up like the flowers here. Flowers in the spiritual world are all very beautiful and they have beautiful aroma, very beautiful fragrance. So that's Shantaras, right? And then Dasharas follow in the footsteps of servants. Krishna has servants in Vrindavan. The ser these are Krishna's servants in Vrindavan. Their names are mentioned. Chitrak, Patrak, Raktak. They're all Krishna's servants in Vrindavan. Krishna has different servants in Dwarka. Do you know who's Krishna's servant in Dwarka? Anybody know? We have Anandini Radhika Mataji. Daruka Maharaj? Daruka, yes. Right, Daruka is Krishna's chariot driver, right? So he's Krishna's servant there in, in Dwarka. Good. Yeah, Ramesh Sharma. Ramesh Sharma? I'm sorry, Maharaj, my hand was raised before. Okay. Okay. Anyway, like that. Anyway, in the purport here, Prabhupada quotes Krishna's servants in Vrindavan. That's Dasharas. Generally, the Vaikuntha Vasis, the people in the Vaikuntha, they're all in Dasharas, the servants of Krishna. Hanuman, of course, is a great servant of Lord Ramachandra. Mm -hmm. And then, friendly, Sakyaras. And Prabhupada gives the names of some of the cowherd boys. Baladev, Sridham, Sudama. There are many cowherd boys, and so they're all the friends of Krishna. Arjuna is also a friend of Krishna, but Arjuna is not really a cowherd. He's not in the Vrindavan Leela. Here we're speaking about Vrindavan, right? We're all, this, the meditation is on Vrindavan and the devotees in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada is restricting himself to just Vrindavan. But these rasas are also sometimes seen outside. Just like Uddhava is also a friend of Krishna, but he's not quite equal to Krishna. He doesn't have the same, he doesn't think of himself as being equal to Krishna. He will sit on a different level from Krishna. But Krishna is very intimate with Uddhava. And then Vatsalyaras, parental affection. And we have in Vrindavan, of course, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda. And in Mathura and Dwarka, you have Vasudev and Devaki, parental affection. We also see Putana. Putana, although she's a demon, Krishna took her to the spiritual world to be his nurse, which was also like Vatsalyaras in the spiritual world. And then Madhuryaras, conjugal love, and Prabhupada gives examples, Srimati Radharani and her lady friends, Lalita, very dear friend of Radharani. We have Lalita and Vishaka, the gopis, and then serving maids, manjaris, like Rupa and Rati Manjari. So this is the essence of instruction in the matter of devotional service. Remember, upadesha saram, the essence of all advice, all instruction. So, Prabhupada's a little cautious about this, about devotees taking up this kind of mood, going to Vrindavan and cult trying to cultivate Raganuga Bhakti. Because Krishna consciousness is a preaching movement. 
We're meant for preaching. We're an international preaching society. And if everybody would simply go down to Vrindavan and sit down in Vrindavan and do this kind of meditation, then I don't know what would happen. It could be a problem. There have also been instances, even in Srila Prabhupada's time, there was a thing called the Gopi Bhava Club. And Srila Prabhupada did not appreciate it. And Prabhupada was very upset and he severely chastised the people who took part in the Gopi Bhava Club. They were meeting together privately to read sections from the scriptures about the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis. And Prabhupada did not like it. He said, this is not our Krishna conscious program. They said, Prabhupada, it's your books. He said, yes, but why you're making it private? Why you're restricting people? Why only certain people? He said, why can't you sit and read? And actually everybody Except for one devotee, everyone who took part in that Gopi Bhav club, they all left Krishna consciousness, they gave up Krishna consciousness. So one has to be very cautious about trying to enter into this mood of Gopi Bhava. Are there any questions from anyone about this? Yes, Advaita Chandra Prabhu. I am still confused about uh, the words Raga Bhakti and Raga Nuga Bhakti. So in uh, Raga Bhakti, I find word devotional service and spontaneous. And also in Raga Nuga Bhakti, I found also uh, the word spontaneous and devotional service. Uh, so uh, can can Maharaj explain more about uh, the difference between uh, these? I'm not aware that there is a difference between Raga Bhakti and Raga Nuga Bhakti. Raga, Raga Bhakti is performing devotional service with Raga. With Raga means intense attachment. Right? Intense attachment to the service of Krishna, to devotional service. And Raga Nuga Bhakti is specifically referring to that we will follow in the footsteps of some great devotees who are eternal associates of Lord Krishna. And we give the example, one may be following the mood of Srimati Radharani or Mother Yashoda or a cowherd boy or a servant of Krishna. And Prabhupada gives examples in each of the five rasas how we can desire to serve Krishna in a particular way. So we can think, maybe your meditation is to become a flute in the hands of Krishna. So we can meditate on all the pastimes of Krishna, how Krishna plays his flute, and how all the trees are happy to see the flute, the bamboo flute in the hands of Krishna, the bamboos feel so pleased to see that, that their, their, their son has become a flute in the hands of Krishna and how Krishna plays a flute and he will call the gopis and how he will call the cows. So one will meditate on all of these different things and it will absorb his mind. You may want to be a cowherd boy. So Raganuga Bhakti, you will meditate about Krishna with the cowherd boys how they wake up every morning and the cowherd boys will go out with Krishna into the forests of Vrindavan with the cows, with the calves, and how they will play games in the forest and the cowherd boys will you know, play so many different activities with each other. Sometimes they take the food, they take the lunch box of one cowherd boy and they pass it to another and they hide it, they won't give him his lunch. They play these kind of games, sometimes they imitate the animals in the forest and they will remember also Lord Krishna, how Lord Krishna is killing the different demons. And so 
that they would sit and take their lunch together and they would see Krishna take their food and uh, sometimes even they will rest together and they may be able to give Krishna massage or Krishna may massage them. Like this, this is the meditation according to the particular mood of the devotee. That a devotee is a, a, he's aspiring a particular position in relationship with Krishna. Someone's aspiring to be a cowherd boy, someone's aspiring to be a gopi, or someone's aspiring to be a parent, to give that parental affection for Krishna. So that is Raga Nuga Bhakti. Raga Bhakti is that very intense, spontaneous attachment to the service of Krishna. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Any other question? Yes, Maharaj, there was a chant. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> okay, there's a question in the chat here. We want to just go over this question in the chat. Uh -uh. Why I don't have a chat here? Okay, I got it now. I got it. Yes, okay. Uh, the question in the chat says, Uttama Adhikari sees Krishna in all, then why is he eager to spread Krishna consciousness? How to understand weakness of heart? Two questions. Uttama Adhikari sees Krishna, Krishna in all. Yes, he sees Krishna in everyone, but he sees they're all serving Krishna in their own particular ways. So he's anxious to spread Krishna consciousness, and to get people to chant the holy name, to give them Krishna consciousness. He sees Krishna working through everyone. Everyone's working through the different modes of nature, which is under the control of Krishna. But the Uttama Adhikari wants to see them also take up devotional service. He doesn't want to see them just only working under Krishna's control through the material energy. He wants to elevate them to a higher consciousness and to give them the holy name. Therefore, he thinks how to spread Krishna consciousness, how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. All right. Oh. Oh. Let me see. Okay, there's quite a few questions here. Okay. To be attracted, another question, this is from Radhika Kishori Devi Dasi. To be attracted to a particular associate at this neophyte stage may be my material concoction, Maharaj answered. So she's saying that uh, when she asked the question, immediately after that he was speaking and he actually answered her question. So she said Maharaj already answered. But there is another question before that, asking how to understand the weakness of heart. All right, how to understand the weakness of heart. Yes, we forgot that. Okay, how to understand the weakness of heart. The weakness of heart refers to our own inability to have the determination to fully practice and to fully absorb ourselves in the process of devotional service. That we can, we tend to become, you know, we, we don't, make a, a great effort. We don't really intensely desire to become Krishna conscious. The weakness of heart, that we're still thinking of affection for, you know, we're thinking about 
family members, we're thinking about loving relationships, we're thinking about uh, material situations, we're not just thinking about Krishna. We haven't fully surrendered ourselves to Krishna. So this is the weakness of heart, material identification, identification with the material world. And then this question by Kishori, Radha Kishori, I'm, I'm not following, to be attra attracted to a particular associate. That was already answered. Oh, it's already answered? Yes, and the next one is by Manoj Padilla. The problem is, if we take Rasa, just the So, if we take raga path, just that we look more advanced, then it is artificial. Certainly, if you take the raga path just to look advanced, then it is certainly artificial. It, and you won't maintain it for very long. You'll simply bring disrepute to the path of raga. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, they preach very strongly about the uh, problems here that people without proper qualification try to take up this path of Raganuga Bhakti or this Raga Bhakti. They're not qualified. They do it. They want to, you know, look advanced. They want to look uh, spiritual. They want to pretend or to fool themselves that they're actually advanced, then yes, it is artificial and it brings a bad name to these people, to other people. Just like we see at Radha Kund, Srila Prabhupada was very concerned that he didn't want devotees to go to Radha Kund because he knew the influence of many of the Babaji's there is really not good. That although they're there in Radha Kund, and they may dress like Babaji's in the mood of Rupa Goswami, in the mood of Raghunath Das Goswami, but they still have a lot of material attachments and sometimes they're even engaged in sinful activities. So Prabhupada was very cautious. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur were also concerned about this. It said when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati went there to Radha Kund, he spoke about the Ishopanishads, and when the, the Babaji's, they came, when they, when they heard him speak about the Ishopanishads, they all left, because they wanted to hear about Gopi Baba, they wanted to hear Gopi Leela. But he didn't want to satisfy their senses, therefore he spoke from the Upanishads. So, it was understood Radhakund is a place of neophyte devotees, not very advanced devotees. Because they're artificial, they're not really pure in heart, they haven't really come to that advanced position. Another question from Sadananda Ramachandra Prabhu. Wouldn't any familiar bond be considered Vatsalya Ras as, as in the case of Balaram, as he was protective of Krishna as well. Wouldn't any familiar bond be considered Vatsalya Ras? Well, that is the nature of Lord Balaram, very special case, that Lord Balaram would serve Krishna in different Rasas. Sometimes Lord Balaram would be the elder brother, sometimes he would be like a father. And sometimes he would be like a younger brother. And sometimes he would be equal. Lord, and Lord Balaram also serves Krishna even in Madhurya Rasa in his uh, other form as Ananga Manjari. So Lord Balaram serves Krishna in all the different Rasas. He has that, he's a very special devotee. Well, he's, he's the Supreme Lord, but he comes also as a mood, in the mood of a devotee. He's also serving Krishna. He likes to be 
servant of Krishna, takes pleasure in serving Krishna and sometimes Krishna will serve him because Balaram is the elder brother. Right? Dauji Kanaya, Krishna Kabaya. Balaram is Dauji, he's the older brother. So you could say older brother is Vatsavyaras, but sometimes also it's Sakyaras, it varies. Balaram's mood changes. Going ahead, if our, this question is from uh, Bhavagrahi Nanda Nandana Das. If our Siddhaswarup is already there in Goloka, then we have our own rasa there. In that case, why do we need to aspire separately now, Maharaj? Yes, our rasa is there in Goloka, but we have to prepare ourselves for going to Goloka. It's not that we can immediately go there to Goloka and enter into our rasa. We have to prepare ourselves to enter into that particular position. And it, Jiva Goswami mentions, he said, usually a devotee will not immediately go back to Godhead, but after they give up the body, they will take birth in some other place where Lord Krishna is appearing, where he's performing his pastimes, and they will take part in Krishna's pastimes there. And they will get further training before they go back to Godhead. Because in order to go back to Godhead, we have to be fully purified, fully prepared. And we need that training, that preparation to go back. Even though you say it's our rasa, but we have to, we've been here in this material world a long time. We've become very covered over. We've forgotten everything. We have to revive it. And so, with the help of the super soul in the heart, and with pure, pra intense practice of devotional service, some rare soul may be inclined to a particular mood of bhakti. And they take up some cultivation of that particular mood in relation to serving Krishna. And they go on and develop that. And their aspiration can be satisfied. Krishna sees, just like Krishna saw Putana come with her poison breast, she wants to be Krishna's mother. Krishna took her back to Godhead. Krishna saw, uh, Krishna saw, uh, who was it? Uh, he had two extra arms, Pundraka, Pundraka, want, he put on two extra arms to have a forearm form and he came asking Krishna for the Sudarsan Chakra. So Krishna took him back to Godhead and he gave him a forearm form in Vaikuntha because he wanted to have that form. Krishna thought he wants to be a devotee, take him there and let him have a forearm form. And Krishna took also Agasura. Agasura also went back to Godhead because Krishna entered into his mouth and Krishna purified him. So even, even these demons, they could get a particular place in the spiritual world as servants. So we don't know what our rasa is, but some people, they have a, a strong inclination they have a strong attraction towards a particular rasa and they like to cultivate it. So they can do it. At the same time, they can carry on their devotional service. It's not that they have to give up doing service. People who are doing this kind of bhakti, they can also continue to do vaidhi bhakti. They can continue to follow all the regulative, regulative principles, hearing and chanting, doing everything like other devotees, but internally they may cultivate that particular mood. And they're very attached to hearing particular pastimes of the Lord. All right, going on, another question from Sadananda Ramachandra Das. 
Please correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding. Oh. Oh. Madam, that, that was attached to the previous message. Uh, I think someone has messaged. Sorry. Oh, okay. So then, from Priya Govinda Prabhu, why did the residents of Vrindavan experience spontaneous devotional service, Raganuga Bhakti, yet they were worshippers of demigods, especially Indra, who gave them rain? <laughs> well, Krishna didn't approve of them worshipping demigods, and that's why you have the Govardhan Leela. So Krishna, when Krishna appeared, he was not happy to see the residents of Vrindavan worshipping other demigods like Indra. And Krishna stopped that. And Srila Prabhupada told us, he said initially in Vrindavan there were only Krishna temples in Vrindavan. There were no other temples. He said, it's only recently that these other temples, different gods have come up. But really Vrindavan is meant for cultivating the mood of pure devotion. And particularly when Krishna came with his eternal associates like Nanda Maharaj and so many others, they're all his eternal associates, Krishna didn't want to see them worshipping demigods. And he wanted to see them just cultivating pure devotion. Therefore, he had them worship Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas and the cows. No need to worship Indra. So Krishna corrected the situation. All right. And then one more. Shankara Das. Uh, oh, it's not a question, Maharaj. Oh, oh, okay. He's talking to me. Talking to you, okay. You're using the chat to communicate, no? <laughs> okay. Gita Indra Lake Madhiji has a hand. Hare Krishna Mahadana. Maharaj, is there some relation in these two, like uh, this Adha Shaddha Tata, that eight stages that we talked of, and then this, like Shravandas, Varandas, and Smarana Vastha. So, is there any correlation or we can like correlate these two? That is also stages, these are also stages. These are stages of remembering Krishna. Mm -hmm. No, could, I'm not very clear about your question. Could you tell me again? My question is that uh, uh, we are talking about these stages also and that other Shraddha Tata, uh, that uh, stages also, the eight stages. So what is the correlation and how can we connect them, both of them? Oh, okay. Yes. So Prabhupada has described to us here about this, this stage of meditating and remembering Krishna. So this will come in the stage of, it be, will begin from the, the, the bhajana kriya, right? But to actually, uh, if we look back, let me look, let me, how do I get rid of this thing? Do I just press this red one? Yes, there you go. Oh, I've lost the whole thing now. That is the, the power that is there, but it's not showing on Zoom. Where's my book? <laughs> What did you press? Command? command. Tab. If you do command tab, tab, this one, mm. then it shows all the windows open mm. and you can cycle. You can say tab, 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 and it cycles through all of them. Mm. Thank you. All right, let's look at this. Uh, Mandaji wants to understand how these different stages of meditation relate to the process of devotional service. So Prabhupada begins, he says, this, he says, neophyte stage, one should always be engaged in hearing Krishna Kata. So hearing, this is, this is called Shravana Das, and this, this will certainly be Bhajana Kriya, right? Part of Bhajana Kriya. 
that will depend a lot on the on the particular devotee. This is a, this is a particular stage, the concentration on the the process of hearing and remembering Krishna, his transcendental form, that that from constantly remembering the holy name and hearing his form, one can come to the stage of Varanadas. Comes to that stage, he becomes attached to the hearing and able to chant in ecstasy. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, this becomes like a symptom of bhava. He attains the stage of smarana vasta, the stage of remembering. So we can see different levels here in the process of, in the, in the practice of remembering Krishna. You come to the stage of smarana, smarana vasana, vasta, smarana vasta, constant remembrance and coming up to the stage of trance, samadhi, when meditation expands, becomes constant, it's called anusmriti, uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti enters the stage of samadhi and smarana das samadhi one will understand his original constitutional position so we can see that there's a different quite different from the stages of bhakti which were described when we mentioned the nine different stages of bhakti, coming up to bhava and then prema, right? Here, the talk, Prabhupada is quoted, this is called sampati das, the perfection of life. So, the perfection of life, understanding our eternal relationship with Krishna. It is different from the practice, the, the, the other stages where we learn about coming to the stage of bhava and prema, prema developing love of God. And then at the stage of love of God, one will also, will one also know his rasa with Krishna? One will, will one also know his eternal relationship with Krishna? We would expect so, generally, but it appears to be quite a different process from what we are calling the stages of bhakti. It's like different, different lines, two different lines. In the next paragraph, Prabhupada goes on to talk about giving up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engaging in regular devotional service. So he brings it back to, you know, uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, according to the rules and regulations. But then, from Vaidhi Bhakti, then you come to the Raganuga Bhakti, and the spontaneous, the mood of spontaneous devotion which is particularly related to Krishna in Vrindavan. There's no Raganuga Bhakti in Vaikuntha. It's the nature of Goloka, that if you want to go to Goloka, you have to practice Raganuga Bhakti. Those devotees who aspire to enter into Vrindavan, into Goloka Vrindavan, where Krishna is the cowherd boy, then you have to cultivate this Raganuga Bhakti. There's no Raganuga Bhakti in Vaikuntha. It's different. Vaikuntha is more the mood of Vaidhi Bhakti. So, How to understand these different levels of remembering Krishna, cultivating remembrance of Krishna? Just simply we have to understand that there are these different levels 
There are these different levels of concentration of the mind on Krishna. And that one can come up to that kind of stage, constant re remembrance. Of course, our process is through chanting the holy name. By chanting the holy name, we develop remembrance of Krishna. So Prabhupada, he, we don't really, I don't really see any connection between the two between these two levels, two different stages. It's not mentioned that there's a particular relationship between these two lines, between these two processes. And we could even think maybe it's a separate path, a separate process which is being described, how you can understand your particular rasa come to know your particular rasa. But we're following our own founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, and he gave us the instructions how we should chant, what we should do. Now he's put this, this section here in the purport it may be coming from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Is it? Yeah. You see, earlier it was mentioned Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had commented as follows on this verse. This may also be part of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's commentary. So I'm not really able to answer your question about this. I wouldn't, it may be simply some different process which is being described. What we do need to know, we need to know that there is such a process as Raganuga Bhakti and it involves following the residence of Vrindavan, that one should be aspired to follow a particular resident of Vrindavan. And we're given examples in each of the rasas. So one should be... Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers, generally Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, they were all in the mood of the gopis. They cultivated the mood of the gopis. They considered the gopis to have the highest love for Krishna. But it's also possible that you can be attracted to some other personality there in Vrindavan and cultivate their mood. It would not be in conjugal love, but it also can be there in Goloka. You can be a flute, you can be a flower in Krishna's garland, you can be a cow, you can be a servant very special, but in that mood of spontaneous love, intense greed to have that love for Krishna. All right? So, you can see, if we look at the questions on text number seven, oh, we're on text number eight, right? What is the essence of all advice? What is the essence of all advice? How do you answer that? Who? Archana Bhakti Radha. Archana Bhakti Radha Maharaji, the essence of all advice is? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam. Um, the essence of all advice is to uh, remember uh, Krishna 24 hours uh, by chanting his holy name and remembering him, uh, remembering his uh, uh, his name, his form, his qualities and pastimes. All right. Thank you very much. Very good. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we give the examples of each 
perfect devotee in Shanta, Dashya and Sakya Ras. Santa Das, Santa Ras, Dashya Ras and Sakya Ras, right? They're all perfect devotees in Vrindavan, in Krishna's Vrindavan Leela. Okay, so we still have some time left. Let's go ahead into text number 9, which is describing something about the hierarchy in the spiritual world. Would someone like to read text number 9 for me? Who? Gita Indulai Kamaraji, like to read? Because of Krishna's Raslila's pastimes, and superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill. For it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all, the super excellent Sri Radha Kund stands supreme, for it is over flooded with the ambrosial nectarian frame of the Lord of Gokul, Sri Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this divine Radha Kund, who is sit which is situated at the foot of Govardhan Hill? Okay, so you can, you can see the progression in places here. Rupa Goswami is describing like a hierarchy. He says, Mathura is superior to Vaikuntha. Now Vaikuntha is a spiritual world, but Mathura is superior because Mathura is the place where Lord Krishna took his birth, Mathura Puri. And superior to Mathura is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan where Krishna performed Rasa Leela pastimes. And then above the Rasa place where Krishna performed Rasa Leela, above that is the Govardhan Hill, because Krishna held up the Govardhan Hill to have his association with all the devotees for seven days and nights. It's a very special pastime, was raised by the hand of Sri Krishna. And, but even higher than Govardhan Hill is the Radha Kund. It stands supreme because it's full with the ambrosio, nectarian prema of the Lord of Goku, Sri Krishna. So who would not like to, who is unwilling to serve this Radha Kund, situated at the foot? of Govardhan Hill. Okay, someone like to read more? There were many qualities hmm? There were many qualities of the Roshan Pradhan. Who? Roshan Pradhan. Roshan Pradhan Prabhu. <laughs> The spiritual world is three-fourths of the total creation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and it is the most exalted region. 
the spiritual world is naturally superior to the material world however mathura and adjoining areas although appearing in the material world are considered superior to the spiritual world because the supreme personality of godhead himself appeared at mathura the inti- interior forests of vrindavan are considered superior to mathura because of the presence of the 12 forests dwadashavana such as talavana madhuvana and bahulavana which are famous for the various pastimes of the lord thus the interior vrindavana forest is considered superior to mathura but superior to this forest is divine govardhana hills because krishna lifted govardhan hill like an umbrella raising it with his lotus like beautiful hand to protect his associate the denizens of raja from the torrential rains sent by the angry indra king of the demigods it is also at govardhan hill that krishna tends to tends the cows with his cowherd friend and there also he had his rendezvous with his most beloved sri radha and engaged in loving pastime with her radha kund at the foot of govardhan hill is superior to all because it is there that love of krishna overflows advanced devotees prefer to reside at radha kund because this place is the site of many memories of eternal loving affairs between krishna and radha rani rati vilasa okay thank you prabhu so we're hearing about these different places <laughs> spiritual world first of all is three fourths the material world is only one fourth where the material world is a cloudy portion of the mahatattva right and the spiritual world is all situated in the brilliant effulgence of the brahma jyoti so the spiritual world is certainly superior to the material world but mathura is although it appears in the material world is a very special place uh, it, mathura is chosen by the lord for the place of his appearance we have the the birthplace in mathura of lord krishna and we have also krishna's pastimes in mathura just like after krishna had gone to vrindavan stayed there for his childhood leela and then came back to mathura at the invitation of kamsa that uh, he was brought back with balaram for the wrestling match and then uh, krishna stayed in mathura released vasudev and devaki from the prison but then mathura was attacked many times and jarasandha was coming and then also kalayavana was coming and so krishna decided over in, in one night to move all the people from mathura he moved them to dwarka so you have krishna's pastimes in dwarka krishna's pastimes in mathura and krishna's pastimes in vrindavan so it said krishna's perfect in dwarka and he's more perfect in mathura and he's most per- perfect in vrindavan so krishna took his birth in mathura and then after taking birth we know nanda mara uh, nanda maharaj or vasudev rather brought krishna over to the home of nanda maharaj in goku or in nandagram and then they moved to goku and krishna has his leela there in vrindavan and later on then he goes back to comes back for the wrestling match and he kills chanura and mustika these wrestlers 
Then Kamsa is killed and Vasudeva and Devaki are released and then he puts Ugrasena back on the throne in Mathura. But Krishna didn't remain in Mathura, he moved everybody over to Dwarka for their safety. So Mathura is a very important place, it's the place of Lord Krishna's pastime, superior to the spiritual world. But then even better than Mathura, even more superior to Mathura, are the forests of Vrindavan. And we know Krishna performing his Leela there, very special Leelas, the Leelas of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like Rasa Leela, very, very, it's very special Leela, which is, you know, only for very uh, special friends, the gopis. Only the Brijbasi gopis can enter into the Rasa Leela. Even we know the Goddess of Fortune, Lakshmi, was unable to see Rasa Leela. And Lord Shiva, he was able to come in one time, he gets the position, you know, Gop Gopishwara. Lord Shiva is given the position, Gopishwara, that he should take care of the gopis. And so the forest of Vrindavan, very important. Krishna killed many demons. Kamsa's different demons were killed there in the forest of Vrindavan. And they're very special places. Or Krishna had the Brahma Vimohan Leela there in the forest of Vrindavan. So very nice place, Vrindavan forest, the twelve forests of Vrindavan. And but even more Superior to the forest of Vrindavan is the Govardhan hill because Krishna, the Gover, well, the Govardhan hill is described Hari Dasavarya, the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. There are many Hari Dasis, but Govardhan hill is Hari Dasavarya, the best of all the devotees of Lord Krishna because he gave shelter to all the Vrijbasi people from the wrath of Indra to humble Indra, take away the pride of Indra. So Govardhan Hill is a very special, very dear place. Lord Krishna performed many pastimes there. Govardhan Hill does wonderful service, provides water for the cows as well as for Krishna and the cowherd boys. And the, the Govardhan Hill is caves where Lord Krishna would enjoy, sometimes for shelter from the heat or from the rain or just simply playing games with the cowherd boys or the gopis. And Govardhan Hill also provides fruits and flowers and vegetables and grass, so many things for the pleasure of the devotees. But even more important than Govardhan Hill is Radhakund, because it's in Radhakund that Lord Krishna and Radharani can enjoy their most intimate pastimes, right? Other pastimes, there's so many, like Rasa Leela. We know that sometimes Radharani will get angry at Rasa Leela because there's so many other gopis there with Krishna. She'll feel a little jealous that she has to share Krishna with so many other gopis. But at Radha Kund, it's very special, intimate Leela there where only very few intimate associates are present. And it's there that Radharani and Krishna enjoy the greatest pleasure, they have the greatest feelings, the greatest ecstasy, their happiness is greatest there. So of all the places, this Radha Kund is considered very special. And we know the Leela also, that you know, Krishna had killed a bull or killed a calf, a bull, then Radharani wanted Krishna to purify himself. She said that Krishna should go and bathe in all the holy rivers. So Krishna said, I'll call them all here. So Krishna dug his hill in the ground and one after another all the different holy rivers came and poured water and they created the Kund, Shama Kund. And then Krishna told Radharani that you should also purify yourself and so Radharani was going to go to Manasaganga and bring water and Krishna arranged to help her and then this way they had the Radha Kund and the Shama Kund. And 
500 years ago, it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who personally came there and discovered the Radha Kund. The, the place had been lost, nobody knew where it was. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he came to Vrindavan, he found out where Radha Kund was and he went into the middle of the rice field, it had become a rice field, and he began to take his bath there in the middle of the rice field. So that place, it was, the land was purchased gradually and they made, made a small cone and then gradually they got some very big wealthy people to donate more to, to, to make a very beautiful cone, very nice bathing place. So the Radha Kund is very important for us as devotees. Other people, they go to Radha Kund because of Krishna. But for devotees in our Sampradaya, the position of Radharani is topmost. We give the greatest respect to Srimati Radharani. And we always want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. Because by her blessings, we can approach Krishna. If Radharani will introduce us, then certainly Krishna will accept us. So we have the greatest respect and reverence and worship of Srimati Radharani. And we go to Radha Kund because of Radharani, not just simply because of Krishna, but because Radharani is the symbol of pure devotional service to Krishna. And we want to get that love for Krishna. So it's a very, very important, special place. All right, so we just have a few minutes left. I don't know, if the, is there any more questions? Yes? Uh, is there any explanation uh, why uh, Jagannath Puri Dham is not uh, mentioned in this hierarchy of uh, Holy Dham and uh, as we know that Jagannath Puri is the place of inspiration uh, with, with Pralamba Setra and uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also uh, spent uh, his time there uh, 18 years uh, with the mood of uh, inspiration uh, which, uh, which is we know that uh, the uh, inspiration is the highest mood. Uh, so, is there a, uh, any explanation why uh, not in uh, this hierarchy, Maharaj? Well, because it's not in Vrindavan. You're going to another Kshetra. Right? It's not Vrindavan. But this is... We're discussing the pastimes. And we don't hear about Lord Krishna personally going there to Jagannath Puri. The meditation is on Lord Krishna, Krishna's pastimes. So we didn't, we didn't talk about Dwarka. We didn't bring in Dwarka. Lord Krishna had gone to Dwarka. Lord Krishna had also gone to Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra is also very important. But we're particularly talking about Vrindavan. And the, the places, you know, those places connected with Vrindavan and Mathura district. Yeah, there are many, many holy places. We could speak Kurukshetra, Radha, Krishna had gone there, they met there at Kurukshetra, a very special place. And Dwarka also, Krishna per lived there many years. Hastinapur. Krishna also had a lot of pastimes there, but we're, we're talking about Vrindavan. The mood is Vrindavan. Thank you, Maharaj. Anybody else? Any other questions? Arjuna Bhakti Radha Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, this is related to the previous uh, chapter, chapter 8, text 8, sorry. Uh, I, uh, we were talking about uh, Siddha Swarupa. If every, if all of us have a Siddha Swarupa uh, in the 
the spiritual world then what about the impersonalist who desire um, you know to merge with the supreme lord matlab if they also have a siddha swarupa then uh, their desire is just contrary uh, to what the siddha swarupa is how to understand that maharaj yes we have to save them from that impersonal suicide this is this is like spiritual suicide impersonalism mm -hmm. so just like people have a material body and sometimes they commit suicide we try to save them we try to prevent people from committing suicide so the same is there with people practicing spiritual life they they want to do they they, they have they actually commit suicide spiritually by desiring to merge and to enter into the oneness or to give up their individuality mm -hmm. so we have to okay. say we're trying to we're trying to save them by preaching the message of lord chaitanya goravani pricharine nirvishesha shunyavadi paschachad is it right preaching the message of lord chaitanya to save people from these kind of things from impersonalism and voidism because that is as this is spiritual suicide mm -hmm. thank you maharaj thank you very much hari krishna ha huh? ji yes kita indo lake maharaji What is, what is the real position of Maya? And they have given the reason for this bhav stage because the devotee can see the real position of Maya. She is saying you can also see the real position of Maya, and a devotee can how he can also see the real position of Maya. So then, what is the difference? We can also see the position of Maya. Maya and devotee can how also can see the position of Maya. Then how is the Well, it doesn't have to be anything different. It can be simply the same thing. You, you're on the stage of Baba. You can see the material energy under the full control of the Lord. For for the conditioned soul, it's different. But as devotees, you know you you know you're also. on the level of baba sometimes you know you also have a lot of ecstasy in your devotional service you're coming to that level there's a lot of baba there in in the practice of krishna consciousness where where was it actually mentioned there text number 7 yes maharaj in the question the answer of this question is question number 27 and in the answer is given oh oh is it one of the questions is it the paragraph above uh, that shlok krishna sura from my hai andhkar it's the paragraph above that shlok what she saying Okay, the devotee can see the real position of Maya. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
We see Maya. How do we see Maya? How does the devotee see Maya? We see Maya as Krishna's energy under his full control. Of course, there's Yoga Maya and Maha Maya. There's two faces of Maya. It's not all just simply the illusion of the material world. We understand the, the Maya working in both ways. How Maya covers up the devotee to reveal Krishna through one of the rasas. Right? That's Yoga Maya. Nanda Maharaj sees Krishna as his son. That's Yoga Maya. Mother Yashoda sees Krishna as her child. That's Yoga Maya. Right? There's Yoga Maya, and, but there's Maha Maya. Maha Maya is the illusion that Krishna is an ordinary person. Krishna took birth. Krishna has a material body. That's Maha Maya. And so devotee understands the effects of Maya, how Maya is working. V uh, Vyasadeva sat down after taking instruction from Narada Muni, Vyasadeva sat down and meditated on the Supreme Lord and he saw the Supreme Lord with the material energy under the full control of the Lord. So that is the position of Maya. Maya Jakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam. This material nature is under my direction, Lord Krishna says. And so the Maya of the material world is all under Krishna's control. A devotee sees this. The devotee sees the effects of Maya, how it's influencing people in different ways. It covers up the heart of the devotee so they can have loving relationship with Krishna and it covers up the vision of the materialist so that they can have their sense gratification and try to enjoy the material world. It's all due to Maya. Prabhupada writes, Maya means forgetfulness of Krishna. Mm. Not for, not, and forgetfulness of Krishna and Krishna consciousness stand side by side, light and shadow. And so, Prabhupada is referring particularly to the effects of Maya in the material world. Covering up Krishna, that they, he will appear like an ordinary person. So devotee understands how Maya is affecting people. People are thinking, I won't die, I will live forever, I will enjoy, I will be happy. People are thinking, they can lord over the material world, they can enjoy sense gratification. This is their Maya. A devotee can see the illusion of the materialistic people. Right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. There is another question by Dina Vatsal Prabhu. Dina Vatsal Prabhu has a question. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj and Dawat Pranam. Hare Krishna Maharaj and Dawat Pranam. Uh, pertanyaan Tiani ada di Sloka 8, bagaimana hendaknya seorang penyembah selalu tinggal di wilayah rohani bernama Braja itu diberindahkan. Nah, bagaimana ada syarat khusus untuk bisa tinggal di Brindawan, karena banyak para penyembah datang ke Brindawan untuk tinggal di sana untuk Brindawan. Bagaimana syarat khusus untuk tinggal di Brindawan itu? The requirement to be able to stay in Vrindavan Maharaj because so many devotees this came to Vrindavan. Maybe he has to say that again because so the question is is there any special qualification to stay in Vrindavan? Yes. yes. So yes, we mentioned that yeah, the, you should not be a neophyte devotee. You should be very fixed in Krishna consciousness. You should be mature. You should have come to the stage maybe even of nishta. 
steadiness. You've completed the anarta navriti. You've got rid of all of the imperfections and impurities and apparats and anartas from the heart. And you're very steady and fixed in Krishna conscious practice. You fully engage in devotional service. You're very regulated and humble, submissive. You chant very eagerly with enthusiasm and you're very anxious to hear about Krishna. Then you can think about going to Vrindavan. Of course, you have to be, you have to be, you can only go there with the permission of your spiritual master and the blessings of the senior devotees. Independently, we shouldn't go off to Vrindavan. There must be the sanction of the superior spiritual authority that he thinks it will be good. Maybe in old age, we're preparing to leave the body then you can go to Vrindavan at that time. It's a good place to leave the body in the old age. If you sit down in Vrindavan, Prabhupada said, when you're young, you travel and preach. And when you're old, you can come to Vrindavan, sit down and read the books of the Goswamis. So that's when you can go to Vrindavan, at the end of life. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right, so we will stop here tonight. We'll meet tomorrow. We'll try to finish up everything tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. And if you have any questions, please prepare them. You can put them on the chat before the class and we can have the questions ready. That will be good. All right, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. You've got any message for the students tonight? Thank you, Maharaj. 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 Thank you, I have to make an announcement. Dear devotees, can you all hear me?